Hello everyone, welcome back to Chemical Engineering Investment Channel. In our today's video, we will present you the lecture number two on the subject of heat transfer operations. In the previous lecture, we have seen what is the difference between the thermodynamics and heat transfer, what is the driving force for heat transfer, and what are the applications of heat transfer in the real life. And in today's lecture, we will discuss what are the modes of heat transfer. And one of the mode of heat transfer is the conduction. So we will have a brief overview of what is the conduction. And then we will again move forward in our upcoming lectures. And we will discuss each mechanism in the detail. But before going to the original lecture, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. So there are three modes of heat transfer, namely conduction, convection, and radiation. Now you can see there are three diagrams placed in front of you in this video which represents the conduction, convection and radiation phenomena. Now if we look at the diagram number one, we can see that there are two sides of a block with one side at temperature T1 and the other side at temperature T2. The temperature T1 is higher than temperature T2. So, as per the law of thermodynamics, as per the heat transfer fundamentals, as per the thermodynamic fundamentals, the energy, the value of Q or the Q will move from high temperature to lower temperature. As you can see here, the direction of heat transfer is from this side to, from T1 to T2. However, it should be noted that the conduction takes place through a solid or a stationary fluid. For example, if there are two blocks here, both at different temperature and there is a gas in it, so the solid and the gas, these should be considered as the stationary fluid. Obviously, once we talk about the gas, it means that we are talking about the macroscopic motion, that there is no macroscopic motion in the system or there is no bulk movement in the system, but there is a microscopic motion will always be there because of the collision. So we will discuss it once we will go to the detail part, but in conduction, the heat transfer takes place through the stationary fluid. Once we come to the convection, you can see that there is a surface which is at temperature Ts and then there is a moving fluid. So, it is a combination of both stationary and moving fluid that convection from a surface to a moving fluid. For example, if you see this diagram and there is a liquid here in this part, so, this heat transfer will be conduction, but then the transfer of heat from this to moving fluid will be called as the convection, assuming that the temperature of the surface, this T of S, is higher than the temperature of the moving fluid, T S is greater than T infinite, and accordingly, the Q or the direction of Q will be from high temperature to lower temperature. This is the convection. Now, coming to the radiation, let's assume that there are two surfaces, independent surfaces placed near to each other. Surfaces emit the electromagnetic waves. So, this will be the electromagnetic wave transmission and we can call it as the radiation, net radiation heat exchange between the two surfaces. So, these are the three phenomena. Number one, stationary media. Number two, both stationary and moving fluid and number three, the heat transfer due to the electromagnetic waves. And we can read it one by one that when a temperature gradient exists in a stationary medium, which may be solid, which may be fluid, we use the term conduction to refer to heat transfer that will occur across the medium. In contrast, the convection term refers to the heat transfer that will occur between a surface and a moving fluid which are obviously at the different temperatures. In the third mode, which is the thermal radiation, all surfaces emit the heat in the form of the electromagnetic waves. So, there will be a net heat transfer by radiation between the two surfaces which are at the different temperatures. So, these are the three modes, conduction, convection, radiation, which are responsible for the heat transfer. We will start today with the conduction that we will discuss a bit detail about it. Then we will see the phenomena, the laws of heat transfer. Then we will move to the numericals for each case of heat transfer in our upcoming lectures as well. So going to the conduction part, 
it is the transfer of energy from the more energetic particles of a substance to the less energetic particles because of interaction between them. Because if there are two particles that are connecting or interacting with each other, one of them is high energy, one of them is low energy. So obviously the energy will be transferred from high energy system to lower energy system or high temperature system to low temperature system and it can take place in solids, in liquids, in gases. But assuming for especially for the fluids that there are no macroscopic or bulk movements involved in the system. In gases and liquids, the conduction is mainly due to the collisions and diffusions of the molecules because of their random motion. And in solids, it is basically due to the vibration of molecules in the lattice and energy transport by the free electrons. The lattice and free electrons you have already studied about in thermodynamics. So we will just quickly go to the our next part. So you can see that there are two surfaces, this and this surface. It is at temperature T1, it is at temperature T2. Now there is a gas which is present between this surface, between these surfaces and we assume that there are no macroscopic motion. Obviously there will be microscopic as well but there is no bulk movement involved in the system. Now these two surfaces are maintained at a different temperature. So what will happen? The temperature will be transferred to this molecule. This molecule will now have high energy. This molecule will collide with this one, this one, this one, this one and then the transfer will be taking place here. So because of the collisions between the gas molecules, the energy will be transferred from high energy system or high energy particle to low energy particle and accordingly it will be transferred to this surface. But overall we will call it as a conduction because in the broader context the gas is stationary because of no bulk movement or no microscopic movement. And just we will read it out that this energy is related to random translation motion as well as to internal rotational and vibrational motions of the molecules. High temperatures are associated with higher molecular energies. When neighboring molecules collide as they are constantly doing, an energy transfer from the more energetic to less energetic molecules take place. And in the presence of temperature, energy transfer by conduction will be occur from high temperature to low temperature or in the direction of the decreasing temperature. And even if there is no collision in the system, that will also take place. Like if there is a block, solid block, there is a wood and if you heat one side of the wood, then accordingly the transfer will be taken place from higher media or high energy source to low energy source. The situation is much similar in liquids as well, although they are more closely spaced and molecular interactions are obviously stronger as we know that these are the properties. In solids, it may be attributed to the atomic activity in the form of lattice vibration. The modern view is to ascribe the energy transfer to lattice waves induced by the atomic motion. Just like in an electric non-conductor, the energy transfer is exclusively via these lattice waves. In a conductor, it is due to the translation motion of the free electrons. So each solid has different characteristics or different properties for the transfer of heat. So this was our uh, today's lecture about the modes of heat transfer and starting our system with the conduction. In our next lecture, we will discuss what is the thermal conductivity, what are the Fourier law of heat transfer and we will try to solve an example in our next lecture. So I hope you have understood all the aspects of this lecture. If you have any curious feedback suggestion, please provide it in the comment box and I would be happy to answer it. So that's it from today's lecture. Thank you so much. Please do watch, like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. Till then, it's goodbye. Stay tuned for more exciting videos on this channel.